Welcome to the Master Circle Podcast. I'm Dr. Bob Hoffman, and each week we'll be bringing you the freshest, most cutting-edge information in chiropractic, wellness, personal growth, and success. All the systems, strategies, and philosophies you need to grow your practice and life can be found in these podcasts. Follow the links below to learn more about the Master Circle and everything we have to offer you. Please enjoy this podcast edition, and let's keep growing together. There are certain individuals that you meet in life that you know you're never going to forget. And our guest on Master Talk today is just such an individual. This man has a double PhD in both philosophy and psychology. He's one of the brightest people I've ever met, and yet he's got a slant on life and on leadership that I have never heard before. This is a brilliant man. Welcome to Master Talk, Dr. Richard Flint. Thanks, Dennis. Good to be here. Well, I hardly know where to begin because you have such a treasure chest of information for people. I think let's start with some concepts of leadership since one of the things we talk about at the Master Circle is that your office is waiting for a leader to show up. Now, in your travels, you've been lecturing to chiropractors for so many years. What are some of the keys to being an effective leader for the chiropractor in a chiropractic office? Well, if you just take the word leader itself and just play with it, it tells you within itself what a leader really looks like. And for a chiropractor to be a leader, the first thing they've got to be willing to do is listen. Mm. And I think listening is a challenge for most people because most of us are moving so fast, we're stretched so thin, we're so scattered that what we do is we pick up just little pieces of conversation as we move and we try to use those then to formulate what we're going to do. Mm. And all that does is create confusion. Ah. So if the leader doesn't listen, then everything breaks down at that point. Yes. I think also a chiropractor that is a leader is someone who is working on first enabling themselves. Mm, enabling. And then enabling their staff. Ah. Because it's my basic belief you can't lead somebody past the point where you are. Yes. And, you know, you've seen this and I've seen it in a chiropractor's office, how many collisions they are. <laughs> Because the chiropractor expects their CA to be this, but yet they've never trained them there. And they don't listen to them when they bring things to them. Yes. And because they're not growing, they're punishing the people in their life. Mm. And so that CA wants to grow, wants to improve. They've got a chiropractor who doesn't listen, isn't enabling themselves. Mm. So then what happens? The CA leaves. Yes. And they lose somebody that was their strength. Yes. A chiropractor that's a leader is also someone who is adaptable. Mm. And we know the challenge with that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you've got to see it in some of the chiropractors that y'all deal with. Over that, and over again, absolutely. Know, we call them stubborn. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're stubborn as much as they are resistant. Mm. And there's a difference between being stubborn and being resistant. Being stubborn is, I'm going to stay the same. Resistant is, I know I could but I choose not to. Oh, I see, I see. I will bet that you've had phone calls and conversations with chiropractors where they will actually tell you, Dennis, you're right. This is exactly what I need to do, but... <laughs> and then you get the resistance. Yes. And a chiropractor that's a leader is also someone who delegates. Ah, uh, yes. And this is really important because if you don't delegate, you can't strengthen. Yes. If you don't delegate, you then tend to bring confusion to the environment that you're trying to create. Yes. A chiropractor that's a leader is also someone who educates. Yes. And they educate their people. I mean, and this is one of the great things about the master circle. Yes. This is one of the great things about what y'all do is you provide them with education. Yes. Now, what they do with that education is up to them. Yes. And I used to try to make myself responsible for every person that I imparted insights to. And I realized one day, that's exhausting. <laughs> that if I have to go out and hold hands on everybody to try to get them to use what they know they ought to use, and they're not using it, you know what? I'm being abusive to the other people out there who really will use it. Yes. So our job is to create environments where people can learn. Exactly. And then they have to take ownership for what they're learning. Yes. And then a chiropractor that's a leader, the last thing, if you take the word leader apart, 
I think that they are a person who has resilience. Ah. Life is going to throw us curveballs. I mean, I get knocked down, you get knocked down. But the difference many times between you and I and a big part of the world is that we have such a strong passion in life for what we do. We have such a strong commitment Mm. to helping people that if you knock me down, I just see that as an opportunity to get up stronger. There you go. Where with a lot of people, if you knock them down, they see that as a chance to blame. And the reason people don't understand resilience is blame. Hmm. If you take blame out of life, resilience becomes an automatic part Hmm. of life. Wow. But if you continue in a world of blame, you'll never understand resilience. Hmm. So listen, enable, Mm -hmm. adaptable. Mm Mm-hmm. Delegate, delegate, educate, educate, and resiliency. And resilience. There you go. Leader. L e a d e r. Yep. Brilliant. Brilliant. Now, you do a presentation that is so remarkable. It's so enlightening to understand exactly why some teams don't work and some do. And you have a certain way of describing oh, the yeah. employees. I, I would love you to just spend a few minutes on that. It's uh, what we call sponges, spectators, and camels. <laughs> And this was something I came up with several years ago when I started doing some research into the inner workings of an office. Yes. And if you take a chiropractic practice apart, these people just fit into these natural categories. I mean, your sponges are your new people. And the fun thing about them is they don't know enough not to be excited. (laughs) So they bring a fresh energy. And Dennis, anytime you don't have that fresh energy... You have a sense of dullness there. Mm -hmm. And dullness, if it's given the opportunity, grows into boredom. So we need those little sponges who are eager. And we got to have eagerness because that eagerness translates into learning. Mm -hmm. They are excited. That excitement is contagious. And people feed it, especially the chiropractor. If they've had a rough, tough day, they'll go (laughs) looking for those little sponges. Because those little sponges create excitement for them, too. Yes. Because they have an immature passion at that point for what they're doing. And it's passion. But it lacks maturity at that point. Because that little sponge is also naive. Mm -hmm. They believe that everybody loves them. They believe that everybody in that chiropractic office wants them to grow, wants them to be successful, and they don't understand there's an element that would rather that they were not there because of their eagerness and their excitement. Yes, yes, yes. And they're also a team player. I mean, they participate in everything. And the thing I love about them the most, they don't have a history. I mean, I bet there's not a chiropractor out there that hasn't hired somebody with experience and regretted they hired them because (laughs) with their experience, they come in and they go, well, we didn't do that where I used to work. Yes. And so I think it's easier to train people than it is to retrain people. Then you have your spectators, people who go to work each day, not to work, but to watch. (laughs) And these are the people that cause disappointment, cause confusion, cause chaos, create crisis, Hmm. and actually divide and create cliques within the office. Why? They're non-productive. They don't really work. They do enough to keep everybody off their back, (laughs) but they don't really work. They're non-productive people. And everybody tends to protect them. And while this spectator will even go to the little sponge and get them to do what they're supposed to be doing so that they don't have to do it. (laughs) And then if the little sponge messes up, they blame the sponge. If the little sponge does a great job, then the spectator takes the credit. Wow. I mean, it's psychologically abusive Hmm. to the little sponge. And the chiropractor knows what's going on. But because many chiropractors don't want to confront, they will just let it exist. So rather than being the leader that we talked about a minute ago, they become a participant in the agenda of the spectator. And they become someone who's also involved in destroying their practice. They're also non-supportive. They don't support the office. They don't support the practice. They don't support the people. They don't support the doctor. Hmm. And they're certainly not a team player. I mean, they will do everything they can to create disruption within the practice. And the more you grant them permission to do it, the more they're going to create. Yes. So everybody's running around fighting fires and dealing with crisis that started by this one little group Hmm. that we don't confront. And then you got the people we really abuse, which are the camels. And camels are your backbone. I mean, in your life, 
you've probably had certain people in business that you have depended on more than you do other people. Absolutely. And these are our go-to people. Yes. These are our people that if it has to be done, it has to be done right, has to be done on time. Man, we go to these people. But yet we've got people over here who could, but don't. Yes. We've got people over here who could, but if we give it to them, we're probably going to have to watch. We're probably going to have to clean up. We're probably going to have to question. So I don't need that hassle. I don't need that. So I will pay them to just sit there. And I will go to my go-to person, my camel, and I will abuse them by asking them to do more. And I'll wear them out. Hmm. Yes. Because this camel is someone who is consistent. And we all like consistent people. Yes. They're persistent because you give them something and they're tenacious. Because they believe in quality. The camel believes in reputation. The camel believes in being someone who stands above. Yes. They're also someone who is very supportive. I mean, they may disagree with you. But if you come to me and I'm a camel and you say, Richard, I understand your viewpoint, but I need for us to just right now do it this way. They will tell you they disagree, but when they walk out, that disagreement stays there. And they go do what you want. So in that particular point, they're more than just someone who is. They are part of. Yes. And that's why I say that they're not a team player. They're a partner. Yes, yes, yes. And I think that anyone in the organization, the doctor needs to put around them people who are business partners with the doctor. Yes. And not someone that's a team player, because I don't really believe in team, teamwork, or team spirit, because I think that sets up abusive environments. As you described before. Yes. And what I want is I want a partner. I want someone who shares the mission with me, who shares the agenda with me, who believes in what I'm doing, yes. that I can trust, and who supports me in what I do. Yes. And then that camel is also very, very honest. And this is what's lacking in a lot of chiropractic offices today, <laughs> are sitting around having honest conversations. Yes. Because one of the things that I teach, Dennis, and we teach it over and over again, most people want honesty as long as it's not honest. <laughs> and it's hard for people to deal with honesty. It's very challenging for people to deal with honesty. I ask people all the time, do you always want people in your life to be honest with you? And the resounding answer is no. Mm, yes. Because if I build an environment on honesty, then I have to bring two words into play that are challenging. Responsibility and accountability. Yes. And those two words have to start with me, the doctor, first. And I've met a lot of doctors who do not want to be accountably responsible or responsibly accountable <laughs> for what's going on. Yes, indeed. It's easier for me to blame somebody. It is easier indeed. Wow, Richard. I mean, amazing material. Um, Master Talk interviews by nature are short, and I need to get an impression from you that I haven't heard you speak about very much on stage. But you've been around the chiropractic world, and you lecture all over the world and to all different kinds of groups, but you've been around the chiropractic world for many, many years. If there was one piece of advice that you could give to the chiropractic profession to help it get to where it really needs to get to, to help as many people as possible, what would that be? Dennis, it would be my little three words that probably I think are the strength of what I teach. Behavior never lies. Yes. And that one of the things that I look for when I go inside of any chiropractic office or anything is I look for the inconsistencies. Yes. Because that's where the damage occurs. Because the inconsistencies create the inefficiencies. The inefficiencies create the tiredness. The tiredness then rewards the spectators. So if I'm conscious of my behavior... If I'm conscious of balancing and making sure that there's truth between what I say and what I do, I create an environment that then can produce quality. Yes. And, you know, one of the things I know about y'all and one of the things that I appreciate about what y'all do is you're so committed to the quality practice. Yes, indeed. You're so committed to teaching these people patient care. And that patient care is not just what you do with your hands. It's what you do with the total environment. Exactly. And that quality is really about behavior balanced in a consistent way with fulfilling your promises. Yes. Richard, uh, honestly, you're an endless source of great information. Um, there's no way in a mess to talk interview that we even come close to covering everything you have to offer. 
people should buy your books, listen to your tapes and CDs. I mean, you will learn so much about leadership, about quality work, about making sure that you express yourself effectively. Your communication skill stuff is fantastic. People need to learn about Richard Flint. Richard, thank you very much for being on Master. My pleasure. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Master Circle podcast. Many of our podcast listeners ask about the source of these shows. Well, they come from seminars, teleclasses, interviews, and audio albums, many of which are available for purchase at the Master Circle Marketplace. Just go to www.themastercircle.net and look through our vast library of useful, practical, and inspiring audio materials. And if you'd like to attend one of our live seminars, just call us at 800-451-4514, and we'll be happy to register you. It's a pleasure to serve you and keep growing yourself and growing your practice.